Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be looking at ionic patterns of solubility. It's... Welcome back. Now in the previous videos we have already established that while water will dissolve most ionic compounds, it doesn't dissolve all of them. So what we need to do is see if we can find some patterns in that and try to figure out which compounds always dissolve and which ones don't. Now how are we going to do that? Well, we're scientists. We're going to make observations of how things actually work and then see if we can extrapolate from that. All right, so let's zoom in and take a look at, at these results. Okay, so what we're looking at here is just a sample of different compounds that have been reacted together. And if you look carefully, you can see that there are some patterns here. Now let's see if we can identify some of them. Well, first off, for ammonium right here, you can see that there are no precipitates. So it looks like, generally, ammonium is pretty soluble. It will dissolve uh, in water. Um, something like silver over here, though, you can see there are precipitates all the way down that column, which tells us or suggests that silver is mostly insoluble. It usually does not dissolve in water. Uh, some other things to point out, like uh, carbonate and phosphate. If you look at these all the way down, right, they are mostly insoluble, except obviously when it's bonded to NH4, ammonium. Uh, things like chlorine here, if you look across, they're mostly soluble, except of course when it's bonded to silver. Okay, so now obviously this isn't exactly, you know, every single compound in existence. It's just a small sample size, but this does suggest a larger pattern in the grand scheme of things. So how exactly do we know if a particular compound is going to be soluble or insoluble? Well, for that, we're going to use something called a solubility chart. So let's uh, zoom on over and take a look at that. All right, so what we're looking at here is the solubility chart as provided by the state of Texas. And let me show you how to read it. So the compounds are typically uh, organized by the negative ion in the compound. And then those that are on the top half here are usually soluble, except when they're bonded to these. And the ones in the bottom half are insoluble, except when they're bonded to these cations. So let's go through some specific examples and I'll show you how to read this chart. So our first example is magnesium chloride. So chlorine is our negative ion and that's right here in the top half. So that means chlorine is typically soluble except when it's bonded to silver, lead 2, and uh, mercury 2. Well, magnesium is not one of those three. Therefore, it is not an exception and it follows the rule, which is that it's soluble. So magnesium chloride is soluble. Our next example is aluminum phosphate. Well, phosphate is down here on the bottom. And so phosphate is usually insoluble, except when it's bonded to NH4 and the alkali metals. And if you recall, the alkali metals is anything in group one on the periodic table. Well, aluminum is not one of those exceptions. Therefore, aluminum phosphate follows the rule and it is insoluble. Next example is barium sulfate. Okay, well, sulfate is up here on top, which means that it is usually soluble, except when it's bonded to strontium, barium, lead 2, and mercury 2. Well, barium is what sulfate is bonded to in this particular case, so it's an exception. So if sulfate is usually soluble, well, the exception is that it's going to be insoluble. So barium sulfate is insoluble. One more example, sodium hydroxide. So hydroxide is down here on the insoluble half, and it is insoluble except when it's bonded to NH4, the alkali metals, and calcium, strontium, and barium. Well, sodium is in group one. It's an alkali metal. So it is an exception. So instead of being insoluble, sodium hydroxide is soluble. And that's how it's done. It's really quite simple. Well, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I hope that was helpful. If you have any further questions, feel free to comment below, or you can send me an email to chemistrytalk at gmail.com. And if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button so you can get updates on all the videos that we're doing around here. 
All right, thank you guys so much. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Waiting on a train.